All right, welcome to video number two in my USMLE Step 2 CK series. Um, if you haven't read the tu or watched the tutorial video, what I wanted to do with these is essentially simulate the clinical environment as much as I could. I cut my head off so it's not a distraction. You can place whatever nasty attendings head here that you'd like. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a question, give you some time to answer the question, and then go on to the next. And uh, like I said in my tutorial, these videos will be structured in a way that I'm going to ask you a disease. But what I will is I'll ask you in this order every time the definition of that disease how the patient will present, how you will diagnose that disease, and then finally, how you will treat it. This is typically how the pimping questions will come on your assembly step two, or on in your clinical environment, I'm sorry. And this is also a good way to structure or categorize the information in your head for your assembly step two CK. Um, and what I wanted with these videos was something that you could replay over and over and over again to where you knew this information like the back of your hand because on the USMLE Step 2 CK the vignettes are huge, they're long, it's boring and you have to have the information at your fingertips when you go to answer the question because there's very little time. So let's just begin. The first video of the series will start with arrhythmias. Now, like I said before, define arrhythmia for me. That's enough time. You should have been able to define arrhythmia. It's very simple. It's an abnormal heart rhythm. Now, of course, there, there's a lot more definitions and subcategories of arrhythmias, and that's where we're going to go next. So now that we've defined arrhythmia as abnormal heart rhythm, we're going to go into what are the types of arrhythmias. Okay, and I gave you more time than you needed there. What may have happened, you might have had random answers coming to mind. What you should have done is to categorize these things quickly, easily, is the three best answers here is bradyarrhythmias, conduction abnormalities, and tachyarrhythmias. Those are the three main categories of arrhythmias that you have to know. Again, the answer to the question was bradyarrhythmias, conduction abnormalities, and tachyarrhythmias. Now my next question is, is what are the types of bradyarrhythmias slash conduction abnormalities? Okay, now I gave you a little bit more time with that one. What you should have answered is sinus bradycardia, first degree AV block, second degree AV block, and third degree AV block. Those are the four main types of Brady arrhythmias slash conduction abnormalities. Okay, now I'm gonna we're gonna go into each specific Brady arrhythmia. I'm gonna ask you to, to tell me the cause, the signs and symptoms you'll see, EKG findings you'll you'll see with each arrhythmia, and then the treatment. Okay, now the first sinus bradycardia. What is a typical cause? Okay, now the answer is this may be a normal response due to conditioning, beta blocker, calcium channel blocker use, or may have you may have a sinus node dysfunction. Some signs and symptoms of this will be the answer is most patients are going to be asymptomatic, but some can present with lightheadedness, syncope, chest pain, or hypotension. What are the EKG findings you'll see? And EKG, this is probably one of the most important, is you will see um, beats per minute was less than 60. That is definitive for sinus bradycardia. 
with a normal P wave before every QRS. That is how you define sinus bradycardia. Okay, now what is the treatment for sinus bradycardia? Okay, if the patient's asymptomatic, no treatment needed. But you may use atropine to increase the heart rate if needed. Now, in very severe cases, you can use a, a pacemaker. Okay, now for the second type, first degree AV block. What is the typical cause? Again, this can be occur in normal individuals or due to beta blocker or calcium channel blocker use. Uh, what are the signs and symptoms? The answer is asymptomatic. These people with first degree A blocks tend to be asymptomatic. What is the typical EKG finding? You're going to see a PR interval greater than 200 milliseconds. This is key. A PR interval greater than 200 milliseconds. What is the treatment? None. No treatment for first degree AV block. Now second degree AV block, there's two things you need to remember. There's two types of second degree AV block. What are they? Okay, you should have said Mobitz type 1, Wankenbach, or Mobitz type 2. Now what defines Mobitz 1 versus Mobitz 2? Okay, Mobitz 1, you will see a PR interval increases slowly with each beat until all of the sudden it's dropped. Now, with Mobitz type 2, it will be randomly dropped. You will not see the gradual increase and then a drop like you do with 1. So 1, again, is a gradual PR lengthening and then you drop a beat. Mobitz type 2, you have a random drop and beat. What is the treatment for second degree AV block Mobitz type 1? Hopefully you answered none. There's no treatment needed. Now what is the treatment for second or second degree AV block Mobitz type 2? Pace. Pace is always the answer here. Okay, now third degree third degree AV block. What is the cause? And this one is important because the cause is basically the definition. There is no electrical communication between the atria and the ventricle. This is key. So there's no electricity going from the atria to the ventricle. Now how will the, how will the patient present with third degree AV block? The patient will present with syncope, dizziness, acute heart failure, hypotension, and canon A waves. What are the typical EKG findings? There will be no relationship between the P wave and the QRS. This is because you don't have any electrical communication between the atrium and the ventricle. Treatment? Pace. You always pace the person with third degree AV block. Remember, the second degree AV block, Mobitz type 2, and third degree AV blocks, you pace the patient. A first degree AV block and second degree AV block, Mobitz type 1, you do nothing. Okay, now that's it for the AV blocks or for the bradyarrhythmias slash conduction abnormalities. The next video will be on the tachyarrhythmias.